This machine is called a sorter. The function of the sorter is to separate the differently punched cards. Cards are fed nine edge face down. The sorter's method of reading is by a brush dragging across a column of the card. Then through the punch hole, it makes contact with the charged roller. But in a sorter, there are not 80 brushes. There is only one. Therefore, the sorter can read only one column at a time. The column selector here can be adjusted for reading any of the 80 columns of the card. But again, only the selected column can be read. Further, the brush will read only the first punch hole it encounters, and that is the punch closest to the nine edge. Any further punches in a column are ignored. There are 13 pockets across the front of the machine. Each pocket corresponds to a row of the card except the last one, the reject pocket. If a card has no punches in the column being sorted, it will fall into this pocket. The other pockets are numbered 12, 11, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. This may explain why only one column is read at a time. Because if two columns would be read, then the variations in punches would add up to 13 times 13, or 169 pockets. And for three columns, 13 times that, or 2,197 pockets, and a sorter of that size would be impractical. This is how the cards are actually sorted. The brush is connected to two magnetic coils, which activate the shoot blade ends when contact is made. Here the card has a four punch and contact is made to the magnetic coils that pull down the four shoot blade end and those to the left of it, directing the card to the four pocket. Rollers move the card along between the shoot blades to drop them into their respective pockets as each channel ends. Obviously, if no hole is read in the selected column, no shoot blade will be activated and the card will fall into the first pocket, which is the reject pocket. Sorting is set up to progress column by column from right to left in a field. In a two column field, the units column is sorted first, in this case, column 20. The cards are gathered right to left with the first pile on the bottom and the other piles in sequence on top from one to nine when sorting in ascending sequence. Then the column selector is moved over one column to 19. The cards are put through the sorter again. This time, as they are gathered, again with the first pile at the bottom, they will be in sequence. Remember our card for Louise Martin? Well, say, for example, we wanted to arrange all cards of her class into numerical order by student numbers. Her number is 65. 
we set the column selector to six because that column contains the unit's digit of the student number field. And we sort the cards. This is the way the cards would stack up after the first pass, all numbers ending with O in the zero pocket, the ones in the one pocket, and so on, duplicate cards ending up in the same pocket. And here is number 65 in the five pocket. The cards are gathered from right to left, always putting the pile just withdrawn on top of the last. The column selector is adjusted to the five column to sort the ten digits. And the cards are sorted again. This time the cards would stack up like this. Unit numbers in zero, tens in one, twenties in two, and so on. And Louise's card in the six pocket. So when the cards are gathered, again from right to left, and the pile just withdrawn on top of the last. The numbers will, of course, be in numerical sequence. If the whole school were to be sorted this way, the remaining columns will need to be sorted, continuing from right to left, until finally the whole school would be in sequence of student numbers. The sorter is primarily used for volume sorting, although if different files are involved and the sorter could not hold all the cards in its pockets, the regular method of sorting would be impractical. In this instance, block sorting is used. To block sort, take all the cards and sort them by the high order digit in the farthest left column of the field. Set the column selector to this column. The cards will then be sorted in this manner. All the nines in the selected column fall in the nine pocket. All the eights in the eight, right down to all the zeros in the zero pocket. This time the cards are not gathered together. Instead they are put aside in separate piles, except the zero pile. The zero pile is now ready to be processed in the regular way. Set the column selector from the right column to left in the number field. When the cards have had all columns in the field sorted, then the first block is finished and 10% of the sorting is completed. The operator then starts on the one pocket pile and completes them through their number field. This process carries on until all cards are separated and running in sequence. Instead of the accounting machine waiting for hours for a big sorting job to be done, the first 10% of the cards are ready for further processing in a fraction of that time. Each letter has a zone and a numerical punch but the sorter recognizes only the first punch it finds in each column. This means that the first pass in alphabetic sorting will sort the cards into the one to nine pockets. They would stack like this, in one, A and J, in two, K, B, S, three, L, C, T, four, D, U, M, five, B, N, E, six, W, F, O, seven, G, X, P, eight, H, Y, Q, and in 9, Z, R, I. Because the brush recognizes the first punch only, further setting would give no change, except that there is an alphabetic sorting switch. If the red alphabetic sorting switch is depressed, the holes in rows 1 to 9 will not be red. So during the next pass, only the three zones will be detected. When the cards are resorted, with the switch set as mentioned, they will land in the three zone pockets. The 12 pocket, 
11 pocket, 0 pocket. In 12, A to I. In 11, J to R. And in 0, S to Z. Alphabetical sorting takes twice as long as numerical sorting because two passes are needed for each column to be sorted. Next to the red alphabetic sorting switch are the selection switches, one for each of the 12 rows on the card. If there is a stack of cards in sequence, and all the twos, for instance, are to be separated, the operator simply depresses all selection switches except the number she wants to separate. When the cards are sorted, the number selected, in this case the two, will drop into its particular pocket and the other cards will fall into the reject pocket, still in sequence. Although merging on the sorter can be done, it's a limited operation. There must be a common denominator between the two sets, and it has to be in the same columns. Here the account number field is in 2 to 7 on the name cards, and similarly in columns 2 to 7 on the address cards. It is possible then to merge these cards on the sorter, First, the selector has to be set to read the seventh column. Now we feed the name cards into the hopper, followed by the address cards, and set the sorter to work. On the next run, column six will be read. The cards are gathered, always right to left, and refed into the sorter. This is repeated until all columns of the field are read. Then the cards will come out with the customer name card on top and the corresponding address card immediately underneath. This is what is meant by merging.